This is Prairie Land Dairy. My name is Dan Rice. Uh, here at Prairie Land, we milk we milk 700 cows three times a day. Our process is pretty much a closed system. We uh, we recycle our our flush water, and we use that flush water to clean the barns. Then, as the flush water picks up the manure, it takes it down to our separator, where it is sep the solids and the liquids are separated. The liquids are taken to a lagoon and from there we pump it through a pivot onto our ground. The solids are, uh, go through the separator and, and we take the solids portion. We pile it outside on a cement pad for about a week to let any excess water run off of it. From there we put it into windrows and then uh, we turn it three times a week and it takes about six weeks until we, we uh, get a finished product ready to use for bedding. And then some of our manure, we use about 75% of our manure for bedding, and 25% of it gets sold on the compost market. Mainly, mainly the landscapers for for uh, for grass, starting grass. Basically, we're we're making compost to use as bedding is our main goal. So um, our goal is to number one, kill all the bugs, so it's a it's a sterile product, and number two would be to uh, get it dry so it absorbs as much moisture out of the, out of the manure as we, we can or out of the urine in the stall beds. So we want it as dry as we can. So uh, that's why aerating the manure is important to, to get it dry and also to get the heat. To, we, we want to get as high heat as possible to kill, uh, to dry it and to kill the bugs. That's right. our goal. When you think about using compost underneath the cows, it, it scares you to death because you think you're putting manure, which is laden with bugs, underneath the cow where we want a sanitary environment. But it, it, with, with the brown bear, we've been able to get a sanitary product as opposed to uh, manure, which is, which is unsanitary. We're actually putting something down there with the heat. We're killing 95% of all coliforms, which is the big... Uh, the big bug you have to go after in bedding. So um, I w we were scared that when the compost would get wet, it would turn back to manure, but it doesn't. It, it, it's, it, it stays in the form of a compost. When we started using compost, we were turning with a skid loader and a bucket, and uh, we couldn't get a consistent uniform product, and we were running, our somatic cell count was running four to 500,000. Uh, upon, uh, it just took too long, it was too labor intensive to do it, so we, we stopped using it. We went back to using green sawdust, which was uh, actually more laden with bacteria than our compost is, or was. So we kind of took a step back. Then we got a brown bear and, and uh, we uh, aerated it and stirred it and had a consistent product. And now our cell count is continually running about 200,000. So we cut it in half. And cell count is, we're paid on cell count and premium. So all that ties back into the economics of purchasing a machine. And uh, it's, uh, it's been, it's, it, we're at the lowest cell count that we've had in, in two, three years. So we're happy about that. When we look at the cost of what it's costing us to, to make our compost, you have to look at the alternatives that we have. Number one, we, we have to do something with our manure, so um, we have to haul it away anyway. So hauling it and putting it into the windrows is pretty much a wash as if we're just going to haul it into the field. Okay, um, so we don't feel we have any hauling costs to get it into the, into the windrows. As far as hauling the, the compost uh, to the retail market or to the wholesale market, uh, up to this point, most people have come to the farm and picked it up. Our compost has consistently ran, uh, as a, compared to a commercial fertilizer, as a 2-1-1 two, two, one, one ratio uh, on the fertilizer for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, and we've tested it for all the heavy metals, which is a concern with, with manure, and we have had no... no um, there hasn't been anything out of the ordinary on the, on the heavy metals. And uh, our moisture, it, it typically runs 30% moisture, our product does. Coming off the separator, it's about 90% moisture. We let it sit on the concrete pad 
for for that week, and then we drop it down to about 85. So it's about 85 percent moisture going into the into the windrow, and then uh, when we when it's finished, it's about 30 percent moisture coming out of the, out of the windrow, ready to use for bedding or compost. We've sold about uh, 500 yards a month, at probably average this year, and we've just we've just been in it six months, so you know we're we haven't hit that spring market yet. The cost of, of uh, turning it, the cost of the machine is costing us about five dollars a yard, which uh, and we're turning around and selling it to on a wholesale basis for twenty two dollars a yard and selling it retail for twenty five dollars a yard. Our bedding costs on this dairy ran uh, approximately uh, two thousand dollars a month uh, for dried shavings, and that was our bare minimum because it was so expensive we used as little as possible and, and our cows weren't as comfortable. And there's also disadvantages to the sawdust because the wind blows it away, number one, and number two, the availability in Nebraska is almost, it's extremely hard to get for us. So the benefit the compost has, number one, we're not paying anything for it, but it is costing us to, to make it, but I have that $2,000 to work with. I figure it costs me about $1,000 a month in labor. And, uh, and cost in my machine and, and the tractor to turn to turn the compost. So we're hopefully we're cutting our cost by by a thousand dollars per month. And evaluate the brown bear compared to other machines. Uh, the reason we chose the brown bear, the number one reason was the fact that it moves the pile. Uh, from location to, to a new location every time you turn it. Um, with the, the side shooter that we use to bed the cows with, it, it's a big bulky bucket and you go in there and if we'd have a wet surface that we're going into, we our uh, compost is on clay. If that would remain wet, it, we would get stuck and the, the bucket would dig into the clay. So by, tur by moving it every time, it gives it the 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 base a chance to dry out and that that's the main benefit we see with, with the brown bear and also the simplicity of it uh, there's just not a whole lot to go wrong to go wrong with it and uh, the customer service has been su customer support has been very good the fact that other machines leave a few inches of unturned material is is uh, very detrimental when you're trying to make bedding because that is loaded with moisture and loaded with bacteria down there and when we go in to scoop it out if we would get some of that we could easily contaminate the bedding and, and the cow and contaminate the cows also so we need uh, a machine that's going to get the whole product and get a consistent product and that's what the brown bear does the operation is very simple uh, it took the first, after the first time I turned it you, you pretty well get onto it all you have to do is make sure you're just running on top of the ground, skimming the ground, and not not pulling a lot of clay up with it. But there's uh, very little to the operation of, of a, a brown bear machine, and uh, we have three different people who run it, and it doesn't take any whole lot of a whole lot of skill to to do it.